And then, of course, we have other systems, and this is up in the Finger Rock, uh, Finger Rock neighborhood on the north, uh, very far north part of town. And this is a very large system, and you can see that they were interested in maintaining some aesthetics and actually have the panels at the lowest angle that's acceptable for the TEP rebate. And Mark, you haven't seen this system yet, because I think the paperwork, even though this, well, anyway, we'll get it back. <laughs> I'm going to say, you, didn't, you don't see the data on there, okay? <laughs> um, I just wanted to cover some other points really quickly. When we started installing these systems in 2001, our average system size was 1,200 um, watts. And I think that in 2001, there were three systems installed, so I could probably say I've had a lot to do with those. Um, 2005, we were looking at about 3,000 watts, and then our average installed system in 2008 was up year is probably going up to about 8,000 watts is what um, Kevin is, a, another Kevin, uh, working for the solar stores in the back. And we've actually gotten some residential systems that are in the range of 14 and 16 kilowatts. So unfortunately, they're using a lot of electricity. And we do need to hear what Mark said about, first of all, reducing your load before you actually try to find a way to um, do systems. Some other changes that we're seeing in the industry since this all came to being is it used to be pretty much you know, pretty much specialty installers. I don't know how many of you are aware of this, but you can actually go down to the Home Depot now and get uh, solar systems. So it's becoming mainstream. I do have some cautions that I would give you if you're taking some notes. Well, not all panels are created equally. When you're out and you're looking at and you're talking to um, uh, solar installers, please be aware of and ask for the photovoltaic panel performance window. Some panels may have a performance that's plus or minus 3%. There's actually panels out there are plus or minus 10%. So just be aware of, there's sometimes the price may be a lot lower, and when, it, when, it's, when you look at the top level, it looks like you're comparing apples to apples, but if you drill down a little bit more, you'll find out that they're actually not comparable systems. As I mentioned, orientation is really important, and then shading. Now, one of the new advancements that's going to take care of us, those of us that may have some very convoluted cut-up rows, hip rows, and tile rows, there are now there's a new technology called microinverters that allow us to place panels very in discrete locations so that we can uh, mitigate the effects of significant shading on a site. So there are options that are available now. Okay, thank you. Um, the, uh, we've also got the, the advancement and potential advancement for... Um, and I'm not going to go over the economics again because Mark was there, but significant uh, changes in thin film that can be bringing back all this uh, back in line. <laughs> anyway, all right, there are other uh, effects of solar uh, that we can also use. But I think that one of the things that I'd like to actually put back to you and have you guys think about is that what we constantly hear is, oh, that's an incredible payback period. That's really long. But how many of you actually thought about the payback that you had for your last automobile purchase? Or even your kitchen remodel? The fact is that the solar energy installations actually provide a, a distinct payback. It is risk-free, and it will also is tax-free. So we're seeing people that are actually doing the numbers, and with TEP's new rate structure that is now tiered, so that they could be seeing up to 18 cents per kilowatt hour and the very high rates in the summertime, Installing a photovoltaic system can actually have over a 10% rate of return. And once again, risk-free and tax-free. So where else can you find an investment that can give you that kind of return? Just one second more, because if you guys are taking notes, there are some things I would like to ask you to do to help us as an industry and to help yourselves. We need to get some permit fee reform. The utility of the jurisdictions that are around the state are charging anywhere between $80 to $1,200 for an installation of a comparable uh, photovoltaic system. This is unconscionable that the uh, jurisdictions are seeing photovoltaic industry and the solar industry as a revenue base when all the other building permits are going down and that they're actually affecting this kind of revenue enhancement using people that are trying to do the right thing. We need to also have a, a consistent utility intertie agreements and um, utility access because that is something, you know, unfortunately or fortunately, we do work all throughout the state and no one has the same type of agreement or the same type of expectation for system installation. We should also see if we can get Pima County to follow the trend that um, was started by the city of Tucson in providing some rebates towards the permit fees of systems installed in Pima County. 
It does fall in line with Pima County's proposal to have about 50% of the new permits, including solar, to include solar energy in the year 2010. <coughs> also, I think that we should consider seeing how what we can do to help TEP raise the minimum residential of about 20 kilowatts, because there may be some need for that in the future, and as well as trying to find a way to have more consistent utility rebates. Now, the trend has been going there, and we're seeing the utilities sort of honing in on this $3 a watt. Now we see TEPs deciding to go off in their direction on the 350, which is the right direction, I'll add. So we can try to get everyone up to 350. So thank you very much for your time, and we'll take questions after uh, Kevin's given his presentation. Thanks, Captain. Um, next, we have Kevin Kirk talked about solar hot water. And one thing I want to make sure everybody understands is that um, my job is to figure out how to get more solar in the Tucson area. So if you have questions or suggestions about how to do that, policy <coughs> changes like some of the things that, uh, that Catherine mentioned or any other ideas, I'd welcome those comments. Um, you can catch me at the, um, the Solar America City's booth downstairs. Kevin? Great, thank you. Uh, I'm Kevin Cook. Um, how many people in this room uh, have or have had solar hot water on their on their personal residence on their roof? Hands way up, way up high. So that's great. That's great. Um, the uh, you know when I ask that question, and often when we, people ask that question in in rooms, uh, the numbers have really changed in the past two to three years. Three years ago, you would ask that question, and you might get one, one person to raise their hand. Um, out of curiosity, how many people have photovoltaic systems? OK. So, um, so a few people in here. That's, that's great. So um, I, I'll try to keep it brief, because we, we, I don't want to get you guys into the, uh, the, the rest of the sessions. But um, solar hot water is really uh, a phenomenal technology. It, um, as Mark said, our feeling in, in Southern Arizona, you hear it, I talk to so many people who say, yeah, why doesn't everybody have solar on their roof in, in, uh, in Tucson? I don't understand, why don't we all have solar? Um, that's, that's, uh, that's certainly our feeling, and uh, if that's your feeling, then the place to start is on your own home, uh, in, your own, in your own space, and uh, hopefully we can give you some reasons why, if uh, Mark hasn't already already given those reasons. Um, just briefly talk about energy use and impacts. Hot water is somewhere between 14 and 25% of the energy use in a typical home. Uh, people heat with both gas and electric. Both, um, both can be replaced with a solar hot water system. The average electric hot water heater results in about 200 pounds of coal being, being burned per month in order to produce the electricity. Uh, for natural gas, it's going to be a little less, a little more efficient. Um, and uh, solar hot water is it's an amazing technology. Photovoltaics are the the, uh, the amount of sunlight that's captured by a photovoltaic system and turned into electricity ranges from 8% to about 20% of the electricity. The rest is uh, either reflected or, or turned into heat. A solar hot water heating system can capture 70 to 80 percent of the sunlight uh, being, you know, being cast on that collector. So it's uh, it's really an efficient technology. 